Uniform Civil Code being the biggest debate in the country, News18 has conducted a survey with various findings which in fact goes on to say that you know a lot of people are in support of a Uniform Civil Code. I have with me Senior Advocate Siddharth Lutra Saab who is uh, with us. Uh, you've seen the findings uh, uh, of our survey. What, wh how, how do you see this? I believe the Uniform Civil Code is desirable because it is uh, it brings consistency in the rights of all individuals irrespective of caste creed and color the issue that has to be considered is and i'm glad you've done a survey the issue has to be con considered is that surveys must be carried out not only with the minority communities but also with the majority community the hindu community because the question really will be are people willing to give up huf though frankly if you ask me in terms of the tax benefits, HUF has now really become quite redundant and most people are dissolving, are not really continuing with HUFs and it has its own sets of legal complications. The way forward is a larger consultation, a larger deliberation across communities while keeping in mind that there are going to be certain uh, customs, for example, the matrilineal societies of the Northeast or of Kerala as also and the special laws, the customs that are followed in certain communities, as also the norms and customs followed in scheduled tribes and scheduled castes, because there are cases where you will, by bringing in a uniform civil code, affect existing rights which are constitutionally guaranteed. Should we do that? It's not a question of can we do that. Should we do that is a question which will have to be addressed both through the prism of law and the prism of constitutional morality and also in terms of the special protection that we, we in India have chosen to give certain communities, certain, let's say, tribes. So all of these have to be looked at very, very comprehensively. But I feel that if, the, if those who drafted the constitution had indicated that it was a desirable exercise, 75 years on, there should be a meaningful debate, a meaningful consideration, not necessarily in the Law Commission, but within a larger public consideration, as also definitely in Parliament. So a specific finding that we also had in our surveys with regards to a uniform age of marriage for women, and uh, many from the minority community, especially uh, many Muslim women have voted that, you know, uh, age of 21 should be the age where girls should be married. And in fact, in the Uttarakhand draft that is, come, that, that is being deliberated upon is, and th they had also uh, discussed it with a lot of psychologists and uh, doctors. Do you believe that this is something that is a necessity at this point of time, uh, bringing up the age of marriage to 21? Because there is, in uncertain customs, it is still less... Uh, very, very less. So there are two aspects to it. The first is the age of marriage. Well, we can vote it till 18, so why should it not be at 18? That's a question which you will have to ask. I don't necessarily agree with this figure of 21 because uh, 18 is also an important, important benchmark. Having said that, there is something else that will need to be addressed which is not really in relation to uh, personal laws, but the issue of age of consent to have intercourse or intimacy. That is something which is creating havoc when we come to dealing with young adults by the imposition of POXO in cases of consensual uh, relationships. And that is something which needs serious redressal because that law is very stringent. Uh, we also have an issue in the category that we've created for juveniles between 16 to 18 where we wish to treat them as an adult, then there has been some interpretation by the Supreme Court, uh, Justice Maheshwari and Justice Vikram Nath Jadmin, which is a way forward, but that also needs to be streamlined.